In the post-homie-don't-play-that world of 1995, a crucial time in the development of the modern concept of posers or fakes, rollerblading became the most famous poser symbol of all, the Folex of action sports. Skateboarders decided we bit their scene and let everyone know. After that, it was like nothing rollerblading could do allowed it to escape the constant vigil of skateboarding's shadow. BMXers got two wheels. Skateboarders got four. We've got eight wheels. Do the math, asshole. We took the best of surfing, skateboarding, and BMX, and then we just dwarfed those bozos. Blading the edge. Men, get in line. And the rest has been history. The resulting stigma essentially erased the positive exposure rollerblading had earned itself. There are energies being committed to perpetuating the rollerblading is lame myth. Can I trust you? Before MTV discovered Jackass, Big Brother Skateboarding Magazine was doing society's dirty work. And when it came time to publishing their 69th issue, they decided it would be the worst issue Can ever. I trust you? And it was. There was a Benihana air done over two or three 300 pound women covered in fake blood. Can I trust you? The reason any of this is important here is because in that same issue was an interview by Big Brother's editor-in-chief Dave Carney with Arlo Eisenberg. The premise? Dave and his henchman Chris Naraka were crocodile hunting Arlo as he skated spots. When he'd land a trick, they tackle him like the late great Steve Irwin. Even the captions were references to Irwin's particular manner of speech. Truthfully, it was a beautifully satirical piece, but not many rollerbladers knew about it when it went down. Can I trust you? Furthermore, this sideshow was accompanied by editorial in which Arlo was asked questions designed to humiliate and embarrass. What it showed, though, were two things. One, that Arlo has a pretty damn good sense of humor to go along with something so obviously designed to make him look bad, and with the potential to really add more insult to rollerblading's already injured ego. And two, the guys like Carney and Big Brother really were concerned with making rollerblading look bad. I used to skate. I felt like I was a part of a community that was sort of like dissatisfied, angry with something. And skateboarding expressed it not just through the act of skateboarding, but also the art. It was just this whole culture. And it was unconventional. And so now, to be hated just because of what I do, it's disappointing. And, and not only that, but the way, the way that they would disrespect us, that's disheartening. My idols, the, the people that created this counterculture model, I mean, more than anyone else, anyone that participates in action sports, we are all following skateboarding's lead. Yeah, I think part of the animosity originated from the fact that rollerblading was really big. We were taking skateboarders, and they were turning into rollerbladers, and kids were starting out rollerblading instead of skateboarding. So they saw this as a threat to their industry, and so of course they're gonna they're gonna rag on it and try and beat it out, beat it into little kids that it's not cool. It's really up to whoever's doing it to decide whether or not it's whack. Rollerblading is undeniably fucking amazing. Like the tricks that are being done and shit like that is just ridiculous. And to any human eye, you know, you can't deny it. Despite having a turn the other cheek, let me do my thing, you do yours attitude in the face of all this negativity from outsiders. It was only a matter of time before something came of it. Newer than skateboarding, newer than BMXing, so I guess it's got to take its fair share of getting beat up before it gets...